The Calgary Flames played the Vancouver Canucks in back-to-back -back games this past week, and the Flames won both. Thursday in Calgary, Lanny McDonald added to his league-leading goal-scoring total with his 39th. Calgary won 5-2. That same night in Boston, the Quebec Nordics were completing a disastrous road trip. The Bruins' Rick Middleton scored on this play, and Boston went on to blank Quebec, 2-0. Tonight in Quebec City, the Nordics are hosting the Calgary Flames, right here on Hockey Night in Quebec Colisee, where there is always an exciting hockey atmosphere and where tonight 15,000 people are arriving to see their homestanding Nordics host the visiting Calgary Flames. Good evening, everybody. This is Dick Irvin speaking to you from the lobby area here at the Colisee, where the fans love their hockey, to be sure, and where they are hoping for better things from their Nordiques. When last seen in this building, the Nordiques were beating the Montreal Canadiens, but since then, they have played five games on the road, and they were beaten five straight times. It's a different story for the visiting club. The Flames are hot, and the Calgary team comes in here on the start of a five-game road trip for them, riding a five-game winning streak. Standing by in the broadcast booth right now, ready to bring you the play-by-play -play of tonight's game, is Bob Cole. And also on the broadcast, with the analysis throughout the game, is former NHLer Mickey Redmond. And tonight we have a two-cities broadcast for you. Brian McFarlane is in our studios in Toronto right now. So here is Brian to complete the introduction to tonight's broadcast. This is Minor Hockey Week in Canada. Minor Hockey, so the slogan goes, is for the players. And there was a special kickoff ceremony in Ottawa, the nation's capital this afternoon. John Bellavo was there, and we'll have highlights of that ceremony during our second intermission tonight. In our first intermission on This Week in the NHL, we'll be bringing you up to date on two surprise stories this week. First, the possible move of the St. Louis Blues to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And then the sudden resignation of Coach Glenn Sonmore of the Minnesota North Stars. Right after the hockey game, stay tuned for the NHL tonight when we'll bring you up to date on all the scores and results from around the National Hockey League. Hockey Night in Canada on CBC returns in just a moment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bob Cole along with Mickey Redmond and Dick Irvin at the Coliseum in Quebec City. Tonight's game, Calgary and Quebec. The Flames riding in second place in the Smythe Division and the Nordiques a distance fourth in the Adams Division. So we have the Flames coming on and the Nordiques on a bit of a skid. Mickey Ribbon, the Nordiques hope coming home will get them going again. Well, they certainly do, Bob. They've got a good record in this building. In their last 10 games, they've only lost two, so they're hoping they can continue that good work here at the Coliseum and take care of a hot Calgary club that's on the starting of first of a five-game road trip. And now, oh, Canada with Guy Lavoie. officials tonight in his 20th season that's Bruce Hood doing his 961st regular season game that's a record the linesman Leon Stickle and Dave Lynch Dave in his first year Leon Stickle in his 12th season in goal tonight Rachel Limelin 
for Calgary. He has played in 19 games for the Flames, and according to Coach Bob Johnson, he has, I believe, been looking very, very sharp. Danielle Bouchard for Quebec, starting his 25th game for the Nordiques. He has won two of his last five, but he has allowed over four goals a game this season. Game underway, the Calgary Flames starting a five-game road trip. The Nordiques coming off five on the road, which were a disaster, losing all five. The Nordiques shooting it in. It's cleared out of the zone by Lavalle. He's on with Nilsson and Poplinski against Peter and Marion Stasny and Goulet for Quebec. That's the way they line up and to the first 30 seconds of this game. Peter Stasny, watch him. Damarian, he shot from the line. Couldn't get a shot away. And the Flames clear quickly down the ice. Peter Stasny coming back. Long lead pass, stop near the center ice red line, and yeah, Calgary yeah, Flames yeah, are yeah, offside. Bob, we talk about the Nordics and the fact that they are in a five-game losing streak, but they have been just decimated by injury, especially to defense players. Coach Michel Bergeron has to do without regulars, Mario Marois, Jean Hamel, Andre Mouche Dupont, and early newcomer to this situation, Pat Price, along with forward Real Cloutier, and it's made a big difference. Hunter with Anton Stastny and Cote on the left side for the Quebec Nordiques. Calgary intercepting. Quick break in front. McDonald hit the goal post. Rebound. McDonald again got it back and hit McDonald's skate this time and rolled out as Schwinar flipped it out. They came awfully close. Schwinar right in on top of Dan Bouchard. And that has the fans jumping a bit. The Calgary Flames breaking fast to center. Again, McDonald is coming in. Lady on goal. It's loose in front of the net, and it's cleared by Hunter to the line. Out for Cote. He's going in for Quebec. Flipped it in front. Hunter didn't see it. Russell is in there for Calgary. Getting it up to Schwinar to center. Coming in with McDonald on the right side, winding up. Couldn't get a shot away, and Bouchard will hang on. So a close call as the flame hit the post from the Coliseum in Quebec City. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Guy Schwinard for Calgary. Flipping one on the post. Mick, they nearly went ahead. One to nothing. And the Flames have it inside the line as Dunn lifts the high shot over the glass. So there's no question. Of that line for Calgary. Uh, McDonald, Schwinard, and Young Beers on the left side is a big fella. He's working out very well. Of course, McDonald leading the league in goals scored with 39 goals. And Dick, I think Schwinard sort of finding himself again after having a terrible start this year. Struggled all the way through until around Christmas time, Mickey, but he has played so well of late, according to the followers of the Flames. So they played a minute and a half in the first period. There's no score. Lemelin out of the net, clearing it into the corner, but it's grabbed by Cookie. He got it in front of the goal. The Flames, three of them, try to move it out. Reisbrow had to circle and go back. He had to hurry his pass off the boards, but it's grabbed at center ice and cleared in by Jackson. Bouchard stopping it there. Blake Wesley on the boards. Quebec can't move it out. First try. Wesley again played it ahead on the left side. And now the Quebec Nordiques get rid of it to center ice, but Reisbrow grabs it quickly. Back to Dunn. In through the middle. It's cleared in by Jackson. Calgary Flames making changes now as the Nordiques start away with two and a half minutes gone in the opening period. A long pass in on the wing. Playball went after it. Couldn't catch up to it. And three Calgary Flames again. Good positional hockey by Calgary as they move it in. It's dropped back to the line. And Pema intercepted to Peter Stastny. Finding some room. Stastny put a pass in front. Bichette knocked it down up the line into the corner. Stastny coming in looking for it. Peter Stastny got a pass in front. Marion was too closely covered and couldn't get a stick on it. Now he has it. Laid it in back of the goal, Reinhardt for Calgary. Couldn't hit his man up the line. It slides down the ice. Icing waved off. Three minutes, ten seconds gone in the first period. And no score. It's wide open so far. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Coliseum in Quebec City.
3.09 gone in this scoreless first period as the Flames and the Nordics get going here in Quebec. Face off now coming up to the left of Bouchard, deep in the zone. Calgary keeping it in. It's knocked down in front, and Weir will clear it. Out to the line, it comes to center. Aubrey coming in. A pass to Paymon, and he put the bullet shot in at Lemelin, and he hangs on to it. Now, there is Richard Lemelin in his 20th game of the season. Originally in the NHL with the Philadelphia organization, and the Flames obtained him in 1980. Don Edwards and Lemelin were both injured for a while just prior to Christmas, but now they are back as the two goaltender system duo for the Flames. As Michel Bergeron looks, uh, he is upset with his hockey club. Lemelin has lost just one in his last nine starts, playing in his old hometown of Quebec City tonight. Bouchard loving one. His slip stopped it for Calgary. This slip falling, got a pass in front though. And the Quebec Nordiques starting again. That's Wesley, 25, shooting a long one in. Paymont slow, moving up on the right side. McCray is with him. Aubrey is playing at center ice on that Quebec line. And the Calgary Flames bring it right back. At the four minute mark, Heinmarsh went in. Flipped an easy one in for Bouchard. He got rid of it for McCray, coming out. McCray dumped the high one to center ice. It's tipped with a high stick. And it's called. Dixon statistics, I think, uh, sort of sums up the play of the Nordiques and the problems they've been having lately. The three Stassi brothers in the last nine hockey games have only got 18 points total between the three of them. And of course, they run one, two, and four, I guess, on the hockey club. In the overall scoring, Marion was 63 total points, Peter was 61, and Anton was 48. Nelson of Calgary with Poplinski getting some room. The backhand shot, the rebound set up, but it was cleared by Bouchard as he reached with a stick and knocked it away. Peter Stastny now coming back. In on the wing with Goulet, dropping it back to Peter Stastny. A great move in front of the net for Pichette. He took the shot and a breakaway now. Calgary, Poplinski trying to lug it in. They're catching up to him. He gets a pass in front. Nobody there. Poplinski just failed to pull away. Good back checking though by Pichette and Rochefort. Rochefort in particular, Bob, did a super job. He's been bothered by a leg injury and he's back in the lineup tonight after missing the last couple of games. And it looked like Poplitsky had a breakaway, but they cut the pepper before he could get a shot away. And as you see, they force him wide on the play. Some good hustle by the Quebec defense after it. That was a funny play by Peter Stastny, Mickey. It looked like he could walk right in and take the shot. He elected to pass it back to Pichette. That's when the Nordiques got in trouble. As they do so many times, the Europeans get that good shot up trying to make a perfect play. Schwedar is on now again for Calgary with Ed Beers and Lanny McDonald. McDonald, a sharpshooter, number nine on the right wing. The Quebec Nordiques shoot it down the ice. McDonald just barely missed it at center. Ribble flipped it ahead. Beers lost it to Hunter. In with Anton Stastny, yet it poked away. Schwedar again, a lead pass intended for McDonald. McDonald going in to pick it up. It's knocked down in front of the goal, and the Nordiques cleared off the boards down to the Calgary blue line. Beers got that pass neatly. Flipped it in for Schwedar. Going right in. Hit the goal post. That's two for him tonight. We've only played five and a half minutes. It's Schwedar again. Stopped by Bouchard. How many chances can you have in the first six minutes of a hockey game? All one player doing that. Look at Stastny now making moves. Back in front it comes. Bullet shot from the blue line was just wide as Wesley walked into it. No score in this opening period. It's called in the offside. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Coliseum in Quebec City. No score in this first period. Tim Tookie, number 17 at center ice, as Weir moves over now, bumping with Reinhardt. Reinhardt cleared it in with a skate, and Weir anticipating that move around the net to the line. Weir pass over for Wesley to center. He got rid of it, tired it. And he's on there with Tookie and Paymaws on the right wing for Quebec. Calgary having glorious scoring opportunities. Quebec had a couple also. Here's Reisbrow coming in, trying to make the play over on the left wing to Mokozak, but he failed to pick it up. Paymaw again to center, coming in, offside. He made that one move at the blue line, and offside is called. 
Rocky Sweetheart having quite a time against his one-time flame teammate goaltender, Dan Bouchard. As Bob Cole mentioned, Mickey, how many chances can you get? Two goal posts, this one on the outside of the post. Well, Schwinard coming home to play from Quebec City originally, played with the Ramparts here in his junior days, and he's had three excellent scoring chances here in the early going. Had some family and friends here this morning at the workout, so he's happy to be back home and probably wishing he put a couple of those shots in behind Daniel Bouchard. Aubrey, Slager, and McCray for Quebec against Bridgman, Hindmarsh, and Hislop. For Calgary, the Flames shoot it in again. Bouchard out of the net, stopped by Hislop on the boards, a good move. In back of the net goes Moeller. Played it up on the right side, and Slager got rid of it. Hislop will slap it back in for Calgary. They're nearing the seven-minute mark of the opening period, no score. There have been several chances, though, at both ends. Long pass to Bridgman, couldn't stop it. Again. The Nordiques go in offside is called at the Calgary Blue Line. Brian mentioning off the top of the show, Pete Peters with his sixth shutout of the season, second in a row. How about that? There isn't a goaltender who has more than two elsewhere in the NHL. Connell and Dufour did the scoring for Boston in that 2 nothing win over the New York Rangers. Nick, when Peters and the Bruins shut out the Nordiques Thursday, was the first time in 232 consecutive games that Quebec had failed to score at least one goal. That's an NHL record. Previous record of 228 held by Chicago. It's the first time, Bob, also that they've beaten Quebec in Boston for quite a while. Quebec is very successful in the Boston Garden in the past year and a half. And of course, last year winning that big game in the playoffs, seventh game. The Bruins and Peters, well, they're doing it to everybody. They sure are. Michelle Bergeron, next to the Charidaire Juniors in his third season back at the bench here in Quebec. Talking to the young coaches. Bob Cole found out this morning. Everybody finds out when they talk to him. Flip shot out of the zone into the center ice area. That's Marion Stastny. Couldn't make a move on it. A second try. It comes back to Pichette. Pichette got rid of it. Rochefort stopped at his own line. He got away from Nilsson up to center ice. Peter Stastny coming in. Back to Marion. Peter lost his stick. He was hit inside the line. Nilsson bringing it back in for Calgary. Into the slot. He goes. Dumped it to Blinsky in front. And he couldn't get the shot away. Again, the Nordiques come out. Marion Stastny, Peter Stastny. There goes Goulet on the wing. It's not loose, and the Flames were back covering up. Nearing the eight-minute mark of the opening period, and there's no score. Maybe this will be the first goal. Peter and Marion. Marion in front, Goulet! And he fired it on an open wing. Nobody was on that side. The Flames get it back to center. The Nordiques coming on a bit strong now. Nilsson, though, picks it up. Leaves it in the center ice area. Paplinski's pass hit a leg. They're changing now as Moeller brings it out. Shoots it right on the net from his own side on the center ice red line. Conroy for Calgary. Flipped it into the corner. Reinhardt tried to hit his man. Beers at center. Went by him. Moeller coming back. Found the net. Had some trouble. McDonald nearly stopped it. Now Schwinar stopped one outside the line. That sends Beers in. Schwinar again. He's had three good scoring chances. Russell shot. Schwinar got a stick in front of that one. Tipped it up the net. Minder Bouchard. Back on the wing. For the Nordiques. Anton Stasny to the post. And it goes ringing off the post. Back to the line of Wesley. That shot on. Lemelin stopped it. The Nordiques now applying the pressure. Halloran to back of the net for Calgary. They're nearing the halfway mark of this first period. Again, Hunter intercepting. Anton Stastny was uncovered in front. He has it now near the boards in back of the net it goes. Eloranta fighting for it back there for the Flames. Now Hunter digging it out. Pass to the face. It rolled to the goal line and the referee, Bruce Hood, was in great possession. No goal. And still no score. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Coliseum in Quebec City. No score of this first period. Coming up to the halfway mark. That's Chucky 17. He played it in behind the net on the draw, and Richie Dunn gets it out to center to Risebrow. He neatly dropped it back, and it's cleared in by Jackson. Bouchard out of the net. Here comes Jackson looking for it. The goaltender stopped him. He couldn't move. 
And the Nordiques shoot it down the ice. Icing waved off as Riddle goes back. Great action, Mickey, in this opening period. A lot of scoring opportunities so far. There's a play to center ice, and again a chance for Jackson. Coming in, shooting it, and Bouchard stopped it, lost it for a second, then found it and held it. Daniel Bouchard in the nets tonight for the Nordics, a former flame, came here a couple of seasons ago. Here's that follow the bouncing puck routine, Mickey, at the other end, right on the line on Hunter. Hunter. Hunter doing some good work behind the Quebec net, centered in front of the net. Cote was in front, trying to cause some problems. Looked like it deflected right off his skate. It's uh, right against the goalpost. There was the pile up in front. Pat Ribble and Cote and Levelin just grabbing that thing as it deflected off the goalpost. Still have a 0 0 hockey game. Right from the draw, the shot is wide of the net, into the corner, LaPointe. He dumped it along the boards, and McCray coming out. Played it ahead to Aubrey, who was upended as he hit the line. And Paymaw is now out on that wing, on the right side with that Quebec line. It's dropped back to Hislop, coming in, tried to dig it out front. Bridgman has it. Got it in front of the net, scrambles it, he scored! It went up. Dropped down again, hit Bouchard. The goaltender couldn't find it, and it rolled off his back, I think. Mickey, and into the net. Bouchard seems to be signaling Mick to the referee a bit of an argument from him that somebody hit the puck with a stick over the shoulder. At least that seemed well, to be what he was upset about. Have a look at it here as the Flames are putting some pressure on again. The puck bounces up in the air, and it was knocked out of the air, I think, by Heinmark. We'll have to see. And you see there, it's not over the shoulder at all. It was barely at elbow level, but of course, Bouchard's going to put up an argument to Bruce Hood. We've got a one one nothing hockey game. And I think that goal was going to be credited to either Heinmark or Hislop. It was hard to tell who was coming in on that Quebec net. Heinmark it is, number 18, playing left wing on that line with Bridgman and Jamie Hislop. And the time is 10.32. Bridgman and Hislop getting assists on the goal. Heinmarsh is ninth of the season. One to nothing, Calgary. Now Wesley for Quebec to Tucky at center. Tucky left it there. Now Slager brings it in for Quebec. Gets set to play it to Tardif in front of the net. Goes around the goal with it. Still hangs on to it. He was bumped along the boards by Reinhardt. And they hold it. Now it comes loose. They hold it a second time. The referee allowing the play to continue. Let's see if they can move it. They do. So the play goes right on, and the Calgary Flames bring it out again. Coming in is Bridgman. Tossed a pass away. And the Nordiques led by Schlager. Back to center. In on the wing. He dropped it back. Offside is called. Chucky trailing the play. With the score, Calgary won. And Quebec, no score. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBS. Play just underway, and the Calgary Flames have to go back in their own zone to bring it out. That's Schwedar again near center. He lost it. Hunter is on there with Cote and Anton Stasny, and this is Hunter coming in to Cote. Cote dropped it back to Anton Stasny, but the shot level and looks sharp on that one. It comes back to Schwinar. Schwinar with Ed Pierce and Lanny McDonald are away to center. McDonald played it in. That's broken up at the line by LaPointe. LaPointe got rid of it to center ice, and Calgary leading one to nothing. Russell played it to the far side to Schwinar. He couldn't move up quickly enough. Hunter dropped it back. Anton Stasny left it there. It's dropped back to Hunter. Hunter gets set. Can't shoot it from that angle. Russell tying him up now in the corner. Russell staying with it. Knocked it away with escape. Hunter is after it. Hunter falls to Cote. coming up. As Hunter was upended and the puck is cleared outside the line. A penalty, first one in the game. And the Flames captain, Phil Russell, gets the call as he Trip Dale Hunter in the corner down to the right in the Calgary zone. So the first power play opportunity of the hockey game goes the way of the homestanding Quebec Nordics who trail one nothing on the Heinmarsh goal at 10:32 here in this first period. Heinmarsh is ninth of the season. So the penalty call against Phil Russell, the veteran Calgary defenseman. Phil Russell. I say Phil Hunter, Phil Russell. No, the, the Nordiques have not exactly been up to par in their power play opportunities as of late. Only one goal in their last 17 power play chances. 
working at a 21.5 percent clip good for 13th in the NHL overall. So Lemelin will be tested now. He looks very sharp tonight though as you saw back to the line. Marion Stastny gets set played it to Goulet in front of the net it goes. Here's Stastny snuck it back in front. Playmont missed it. It comes to Stastny. Marion labeled it. Lemelin is very sharp. The Nordiques rank 12th in the NHL of the power play with 35 goals and 163 chances. Little over 21 percent, Dick. And a little bit of pushing and shoving between Fema in front of the net along with Steve Conroy of the Flames. Put some good pressure right there. The Flames pick him up and able to clear the zone or weren't able to the first 20 seconds of the penalty. Well, we've seen a lot of very neat passing plays by both clubs here, Dick. I think as, as much as I've seen all season between two clubs, some pretty passing plays, some good scoring chances, and some good goaltending at both ends. But Bob uh, had a good point there earlier on during a Calgary rush. He said good positional hockey. And they mm -hmm. Rose Ford keeping it in. The Flames ready to turn. Tack. Peter Stastny now will wait. He'll line it up and set it up. Takes his time looking around. Played it into the corner to Paymont. And Stastny, he made a good move, but he fooled his defenseman. In this case, at the point, Marion Stastny. He allowed the puck to slide right back to him. Now there's Peter again. What a hockey player. Peter Stastny got a pass in front this time. Not a good one. And it's cleared down the ice by Diggy Risebrow. Rochefort back, a minute and four seconds left on the penalty, one to nothing. Calgary leading. Hunter speeding up to center ice with Anton Stastny and Goulet. Goulet didn't get a chance to make a play. The Flames get rid of it. Nelson going here. Here they have a goal. He tried to lift it up and couldn't quite make it. And Bouchard made the save. Tremendous burst of speed by Kent Nelson, Mickey, down that right side, killing the penalty. He had hopped in behind the defense. Didn't really get that much wood on the shot, but was he flying? Well, he was holding off the Quebec defenseman. Here you see that shot being dumped away at center ice, and here comes Nielsen like he was shot out of a cannon. And he couldn't quite get at it. The darn puck was in his feet after he'd gotten by the Quebec player, and he really didn't get a chance to get some good wood on it. You're right. And Bouchard covers up with a faceoff. Nielsen, I think, playing better after a rough start this year. They were on him pretty badly in Calgary for a while. He's 14 on that draw. He got the draw. It comes back outside the line into the center ice area. 40 seconds left in the penalty. To Russell of Calgary Flames. Tardif for the Nordiques coming in. With Hunter to the corner. Tardif back of the goal to Anton Stastny. Moeller waiting at the blue line. But Stastny goes the other way with it. To Anton again. Now Moeller shot. Knocked down in front, Hislop brings it out for Calgary and shoots it down the ice. And now, 12 seconds left in the Calgary penalty. One to nothing is the score. The Flames with first blood in this game. Again, Risebrow, a good penalty killer. Never stops working. Dougie Risebrow, now the penalty is over as Hunter played it in front of the net. There's Risebrow coming back for it. He's away across the line. Risebrow looking good on this ship. In over the line he goes. Nice play there. Played it over here. And Dunn moves up. Took a shot and missed the far corner by a foot. The Quebec Nordiques. Hunter cleared it off the boards. To the right side, Moeller couldn't move it in. And Rise Brow again. Dumped it down the ice. A little too far on this play for Mokosak. And it goes over the glass into the crowd. This game is coming to you from the Coliseum in Quebec. At 1507 in this first period a penalty coming up to the Nordics for too many men on the ice can we see one two three four five six yes sir the camera caught it so did the officials first Calgary power play the Flames 13th overall in power, fourth overall rather in power play percentage they've got a good one going Mickey and they've been very effective of late They're a little over 25 percent so one and four should be good for at least a goal a game Big advantage if you can take advantage of those power play situations. And Lanny McDonald is on there now. He has scored 12 of his 39 goals via the power play route. He's on with Bridgman, 26. Schwinar, who's had three good chances to score so far in this game. Reinhardt and Nilsson, not a bad power play lineup. Well, I was going to say, Bob, that when you've got McDonald scoring the way he is, Schwinar coming back and playing a lot better in the first of the season, always capable of scoring a lot of goals, a one-time 50-goal scorer. And, of course, Kent Nielsen. You've got three great shooters out there. Well, there's Schwinar. 
Here is Bridgman. Bridgman, the workhorse on this quintet, shooting it in. Bouchard trying to get rid of it himself. Stopped by Schwiener, and it's tipped near the far post. Just missed. Schwiener moving in again. Right hard up the blue line. Over here is Bridgman. Now the pass to Bridgman. He tipped it to the corner to McDonald. He takes a look, gets it back. Reinhardt to Schwiener. Back to McDonald. He slapped it. And there's McDonald tipping it. Knocked it down. He had to play it himself. Good move by Reinhardt. But allow McDonald to come back. Reinhardt to Schwiener. It's tipped in front of the net by Bridgman into the crowd. Reinhardt fairly clever on that play. Mickey, that's something you don't see too You're often. Not give Paul Reinhardt credit. <laughs> the, I suppose the automatic reaction of somebody is to just grab the puck. Lanny had gloved it to him. So that would have brought about a whistle. Well, the thing was, it, to get back. they're on the power play. They're trying to keep that puck in the zone, and it was touch and go as to whether it was going to get out over the blue line or not. But Reinhardt saw McDonald make a second effort to come back and get it. There you see the play, and McDonald does hold it inside the blue line, and Calgary continues to hold possession in the Nordic zone and get another scoring chance. Schwiner, Reinhardt again. Reinhardt shoots it, and he missed the net, not by much on that shot. Schwiner another time to McDonald. He didn't get good wood on that shot. Now Bridgman trying to knock it in front of the goal. Calgary, tremendous pressure now. They're leading one to nothing. It comes in for Schwiner, stopping at it again and again, and he's been beaten again. Schwiner. Well, almost family and friends he's got in the crowd. You're talking about Mickey Kent complaining about Key not getting the chance. Oh, boy. boy, did he time that one perfectly, too. Moving in right through the slot position well, right there. Kent Nielsen picking up in Wayne Gretzky country, back behind the net, and in comes Schwedard. He just did a flip pass in front. And Schwedard got some wood on it, got a couple of rebounds, swats at it. Bouchard held it up. <laughs> he's going to be saying, uh, I'm going to play my games away from home where I can give a few breaks. Should have had two or three goals already here in the first period. Still on the power play, and it's Reinhardt closing in to McDonald. And it's slapped high over the net. Calgary leading one to nothing. And again, applying the pressure. Reinhardt in front. Nelson took a shot and was robbed by Bouchard. Reinhardt lost it. But now Goulet tipped it down the ice and going after it. Against Schwinar, eight seconds left. On the penalty to Quebec, and Reinhardt is back there. Now Nielsen. And now the penalty is over. Quebec at full strength again. One to nothing, Calgary. And the Nordiques, Pichette, to Rochefort, ahead to Tardif. He slapped it in with 2.40 left in the period. And in back of the goal, the Flames just organizing to come out again. Long play down behind. Mokozak, he flipped it in. He's number 10. From Brandon, played his junior hockey there. Played one game last year in his very first shift against the Bruins. He got a point. Free agent picked up by Calgary, and they like him. He's only 20 years old. Let's see what he does now. He comes out of his own zone. Gets to center. Carl Mokozak left the pass in front. One in the slot area himself. The puck did not get to him, though. And the Dordiques trying to play it out. Stopped in front. Reisbrow labeled it. Stopped by Bouchard. Again, the Nordiques clearing it to center. Peter Stastny going in. 150 left of the period. He played it in behind Wesley. Marion Stastny back of the net. Tied up by Russell. He kicked it loose. Bokozak goes back to help him. It comes to the line to Wesley. Fake the shot. Rose Weir let it go. That hit a skate. He broke his stick. playing it around inside the blue line and of course as Stastny is loose he'll likely make it he did well they really like to throw that puck around those little short crisp passes that's what they did on this play and Anton Stastny from a, a bad angle actually puts it through the legs of Reggie Levelin. Wesley over to Weir into Marion Stastny back up that slot area right there to Anton and you see it looked like he surprised Reggie Lemelin with that quick wrist shot. We've got a 1-1 yeah. hockey game. But these guys can score from anywhere on the ice. Okay, Wally Weir and Marion Stastny assisting on the goal by Anton Stastny, his 17th on the season at 18-29. And it's tied at one. Not a bad first period of hockey. Wide open and going in as fast as again. That's Hunter with Paymon knocking it loose. Goulet got in front. 
And it's cleared back to the line. That's Goulet there, 16. On that left wing, it comes back to him along the boards. Goulet starting out. Gets it to Hunter, on with Pema. Dropping it back, Goulet shoots! <laughs> well, Lemel and Mickey, you have to feel sorry for him. He's had, he has made several outstanding saves in this period and somehow didn't get a line on that one. Well, Goulet really let this one rip. It'll be his 28th goal of the year. He can shoot the puck all right. The Nordics all of a sudden getting momentum going for them right from the slot area. There's Goulet, the hard high one. And it looks like Lemelin went down and misplayed it with the trapper. Oh, no, really a bad goal in a sense for Calgary to give up. Came from about 40 feet out. Then you see Lemelin, you see him go down on one knee. I have a feeling maybe if he had to stood up and let that thing bounce off his chest, it may not have been dangerous at all. But nevertheless, two to one Quebec. And it comes in just 31 seconds of play. This goal at the 19 minute mark of this opening period. Goulet is 28th from Hunter and Moeller. Two to one, Quebec. So the Flames jump out in front, getting the first goal, and the Nordiques strike quickly with two here in the late stages of the opening period. They're leading two to one now. They pour it in again. Back quickly is Conroy. Into the corner it goes. Peter Stastny got it in front of the net, but Schwinar will clear it. Got it out to Beers. He was stopped near the line by Rochefort, who slapped it away again. A pass to Anton Stasny. Going in and stopped by Lemelin on the short side. And a penalty coming up. Live from the Coliseum in Quebec, Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Penalty against Calgary. Mickey Conroy has gone for slashing. Well, Stasny, Anton Stasny broke down that right side, used his right knee to try and protect the puck. And Conroy put a pretty good two-hander on him. 20 seconds left in this first period. Nordic's on the power play. That penalty at 19.34, and now only 15 seconds remaining. Calgary trying to clear it. They get it over the line to center ice. That might do it. Rochefort will go in. Five seconds left. He's bumped on the boards by Eloranta. Two seconds left. And now the siren goes to end the first period as the puck comes right back into the slot area to... Pichet, who was left there looking for a free shot on the net. So a bad last minute and a half for the Calgary Flames, who came so close to taking a 2-0 lead during a power play. They did not, and then the Nordics score twice. Anton Stastny and Michel Goulet in the final minute and a half of the period and the home team has the lead and so the score here in quebec city after the first period of play the quebec nordics two and the calgary flames one tough one <laughs> <laughs> it shocked me when it came through all those legs and all nothing but an open net ah, i went back to rogi later on and said boy i really beat you on that one didn't i <laughs> yeah, still, still take advantage of your chances do you well, i'll tell so you what i question the shots on goal here in the first period calgary only giving credit for 11. And, uh, Bob, I think they had many more than 11, a couple of rebounds. I don't think they counted here. Good scoring chances as well. The official score has Schwinar down for two. Goodness. He had two posts, of course. They're not shots on goal, but he had more than two. Let me tell you, high march now at center. A minute 15 seconds left in the penalty to Conroy of Calgary. That's Russell up to high march. Getting back is Will Paymont. Played it in behind the net. Now the Nordiques try to get something going. They have a minute left. Exactly on the power plays, they move it. And it's Peter Stastny shooting it in. Off the boards, it comes to Anton. Back to the line. Now there's Peter in the corner. Paymon was in front of the net all along. For a few seconds, he couldn't get the puck over to him, though. Now the Nordiques are making changes with 38 seconds left on this power play. And they're leading Calgary, two to one. Peter Stastny knifing it in. Lemelin out of the net to clear it into the corner. Calgary Flames, his left can't move it out. Anton to Peter in front. Marion Stastny, he had scored just one goal in his last 12 games until this one. And, and he now, Stastny's doing. He now has 28 on the season, and Mickey. 
We see them throwing it around. Well, you know, Calgary should have got this puck out of their own zone. Jamie Hislop sort of took his time on the right boards. He had some room, had time. And Anton came in and hooked the puck away from him. The next thing you know, it's over to Peter, back to Marion, and in the net. And then three more points for the Stastny brothers. Here we take another look at it, low level. View of the Stastny brothers throwing it around, and with the wrist shot, Marion Stastny makes it a 3-1 hockey game. <laughs> Nordics in the lead. Five points for the, the uh, Stastny brothers. First three goals. So Marion from Peter and Anton at 1-12. That's a power play goal, and it's 3-1, Quebec. Calgary moving it in. The Nordiques back covering up. They just get rid of it. Hunter couldn't stop it near center. Dunn played it off the boards ahead. Beers couldn't pick it up. Beers went after his man. Moeller shoots it in for Quebec. That's Ribble. He lost it. The Nordiques apply pressure again against Pat Ribble along the boards. Can't get it out. Amon didn't see it. Now he does. Going in, fighting in the corner for it. Ribble got his skate on it. Tried to jam it. It nearly hit Paymont. Bounced on the boards and came to the doorstep of Levelin. The Nordiques keep it in, barely up the line. Hunter gets in front. Hunter gets set. Can't get the backhander on the net. Decides to lug it a bit. Got away from Riddle neatly. Now sees it. That's it. He's back in front of the ball. And the Nordiques overpowering the Calgary Flames at this point. Trinar, though, coming in. Played it in front. Too far for Beers. It's not to McDonald. The next twice tonight that McDonald is just about fan of the shot. Not getting good wood on it. Reinhardt's drive was wide. Three to one is the score for that leading during the three-minute mark of the second period. Pass across center comes back to Reinhardt. He played it up to Hislop coming in with Richmond. Richmond left it there. Hislop bumped in front of the net. And it's cleared out across the line by Chucky. Again, Reinhardt. Chucky with Paymon turned him for Quebec. Now they quickly make changes, and Slager comes out on the right side. He's number 12, up on the right wing. Chucky coming in with Tardif. That's broken up. Hisla played it ahead of Bridgman. Heinmarsh on the play. Heinmarsh couldn't control it. Comes back to the line and missed. Reinhardt slides all the way back inside the Calgary line into the corner. Nearing the four-minute mark of the second period, Hislop ahead. Bridgman's long pass in wide. Back to the net. Now Slager goes in. Hems his man in on the boards. Comes up with a puck. In front of the net. Weir gets it ahead. Quebec on the move again. And this time, Slager made that move as he hit the blue line and his wingers were offside. From the Coliseum in Quebec City, this is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. For Quebec, Peter and Marion Stastny again with Goulet on the left side. Mokozak was bumped near center ice. He took rather a heavy check. Still on there, though, with McDonald and Risebrow. McDonald got it ahead. Slides inside the Quebec line. Bichette to Goulet. McDonald watching Goulet. Pass went by McDonald to center. Then dribbled by Marion Stastny. Russell couldn't clear it out. Reisbrow does. And McDonald was flattened at center ice by Rochefort. Hard check on Lanny McDonald. But, however, he remains on there. McDonald, tough customer, sharp shooter, 100% competitor. Going in after it. Nearly set it up for Reisbrow in front with that four checking roll. Puck down the ice, and as Russell comes back, Quebec called for icing. Either a famine or a feast for the Nordics when it comes to scoring goals. They had five and five games in that road trip they took. They scored three in two minutes and 43 seconds in this game. As we look at Phil Russell, the veteran captain, career high of 10 goals scored with Chicago in 74-75, till it's seven this season. Been stalled now for about a month. Had a good goal scoring start for Phil Russell, that is. That's Rick LaPointe back there for Quebec. Lipinski coming in, can't pick it up. Nielsen on the other side went after it. 
It's knocked in front of the net. The Valley took a quick shot. It's blocked again. Another long shot. The Valley has it. Rolled it to the side of the net. The Valley's still after it back there. Left it. Deflected away from the front of the goal area. Nielsen was there alone for a second. Now he has it. Gets it back out over the line, though, and Ribble has to come back. Five and a half minutes gone of the second period. Three to one, Quebec. And the Flames shooting it in was Richie Dunn. Back there quickly is LaPointe. On the boards for Cote. Coming out to the line at center. Cote with Hunter on his left. Long shot, and Lemelin grabbed it with the glove and left it for Ribble. Quebec changing now as the Flames just barely move it across the line. Quebec shoot it back in. Dunn, if he goes back, he doesn't. Kaplinski brings it out, so the play continues. Down to Nelson. Shot! Bullet drive just wide. Kaplinski now has it. He lobbed one in behind the net. The Valley for Nelson in front of the goal, Reinhardt. And he was checked quickly by Anton Stesny. Again, Conroy for Paplinski. Pass ahead. Weir couldn't stop it. But the Nordiques come up with it anyway. Schwinar for checking. Reinhardt stopped that pass. Didn't wait long enough for Schwinar to come out. He's onside. Nordiques lead 3 1. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Coliseum in Quebec. The Quebec Nordiques with Hunter, Cote, and now Pema on the right side again. Schwinar for Calgary against Beers on the left side and McDonald on the right side. Schwinar at center ice, of course. Pema going into the corner. Beers stopping him. Cote bumped. Now Hunter, he takes a look, gets a shot away. The rebound was set up, but Beers was also there to clear it for Calgary in back of his own net. Reinhardt now, he got away from Hunter. Beers coming out, the pass ahead to McDonald. McDonald can't get a shot away. Check by LaPointe. McDonald after it again. McDonald coming out along the boards. He's dragged to the ice, and there's going to be a penalty on that play. Rick LaPointe going to the penalty box, so the Flames, down by two, will get a power play chance right here. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Coliseum in Quebec City. Now Rick LaPointe, who at one time, Mickey, was a very high draft choice of the Detroit Red Wings. And has not fulfilled his promise. He's in the penalty box. Play underway, we get a quick whistle. LaPointe, at the time he was drafted, was number five overall in 1975, Mickey, but he never really developed. Well, I was still in Detroit, Dick, when they, when they drafted Rick, Rick LaPointe, and they really did have a lot of high expectations from the young fella. It just has not worked out that way. He's moved around quite a bit, been in St. Louis for a while. It's a chance you take when they draft the young fellas. You just don't know whether they're really going to work out or not. But LaPointe's career, by no means, over at this point. Certainly got lots of time to get it going. Reinhardt and Schwinar get it in across the line. That's Reinhardt. Got it over in front of the net. The Nordiques cleared out to the center ice area. A minute and a half. Left in the penalty. And now Calgary. Reinhardt turning in his own zone with Schwinar, McDonald, Nielsen, and Bridgman. They're in over the line. Schwinar got a pass in front. He was in a great position for a shot. He elected to pass it. Now into the corner to McDonald. The Schwinar up front, McDonald was waiting for it, didn't get to him. Back to the line, Reinhardt. Schwinar again. This time a shot, McDonald in that time to the goaltender. Hit the side of the net as he was falling. Rochefort got it as far as the line by Schwinar on the ice. Obrey racing in, go there with him. Obrey shot and stopped by Lemelin. He dropped it right away. McDonald got away from the check from the Rochefort. Got the penalty. The Flames guilty there. The Nordics really mixed through on that stretch. Had two chances that time. Lule set up by Dale Hunter. That's some good passing down in the Quebec zone or in the uh, Calgary zone. Uh, Lemelin out of the net. And the Nordics Lule just unable to get it up over top of him. You see the return pass coming from Hunter right there, and he just couldn't quite handle it. it slipped in between his feet. 
30 seconds left in the penalty now. Eloranta moving it up for Calgary to the line at center. Comes to Poplinski a little too far. Beers went after it. In the corner. Back of the net, Poplinski. Out to the line. Eloranta gets set now on this side. Winds up. Takes a shot. It's knocked down loose in front and grabbed by Cote. He'll bring it out. Eight seconds left in the penalty. Cote from center ice. Decides to kill a few more seconds. Now the penalty is over. Three to one the score. The back leading. Eloranta. Couple of good moves on his own line. To center ice. He dumped it in on the left side, and Moeller is going back for Quebec. In back of the net, he was bumped. Lipinski trying to get it loose. Cleared into the corner. Jackson went after it. Out to the line, Eloranta. He took a shot. That was blocked. 10.25 left in the period. 3-1. Quebec leading. And the Flames are offside. With the score, the Nordics 3 and the Flames 1. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Just announced the crowd is 15,039 here at the Coliseum watching the Nordics return home after what was a very bad road trip. Zero for five, but they're leading here at three to one. Bryce Brown, Mokozak, and Jackson for Calgary. They move it in right away. There's Jackson, 16. Reinhardt up the line, stopped it. His shot just wide of the far post. The shot back there with Rochefort for Quebec trying to move it out. They get it to center. Peter Stastny tipped it over on the far wing. Nordiques keep it in. There's Goulet. Peter Stastny shoots. Stopped by Lemelin. Goulet again. From Arian Stastny to Peter around the net. Got it in front. That's Mokazak going in. Weak shot, easy save for Bouchard. Three to one the score. Quebec leading. And the Nordiques shoot it down the ice. It went by Tardif to Russell, to Reisbrow. Reisbrow backed up in his own zone by Marion Stastny. Played it back for Russell now. Here comes Tardif. He stopped him. Marion Stastny pump. There's Peter Stastny. He's taken out of the play. But Tardif gives it to him again and hit a skate. Up the line, stopped by Weir. Weir's shot is blocked. And it's cleared by Jackson. Coming out for Calgary. Shoots it with nine minutes left in the period. Mokazak went in for Calgary. Marion Stastny coming out with Peter. The play ahead to Peter. At the line. He couldn't beat Russell this time. And Schwinar turning. Mokazak is still on there. Eloranta brings it up for Schwinar. The flames changing now. McDonald going in. Shoots. Put it right on the net. And Bouchard in position to make that save. 8.35 left in the period, 3-1, Quebec, and they're on the move again. To Sarais, Paymont going in with Tardif. Tardif's shot, he can't get it through. It hit Paymont, actually. There's Tardif again, turning around with it. Schwinar stopped him in the corner. They hold it on the boards, it's loose now. Eloranta to Russell. Beers on the left side. Schwinar at center, McDonald on the right wing. And the Flames, Schwinar to McDonald. In over the line, gets set right in front of Russell. And Beers also up on the play. Nobody could make contact in front to beat Bouchard. They hold it in the corner, it's loose again. Schwinar centered it, Eloranta with a chance. Pass in front, scramble, McDonald was stopped again. 7.45 left in the period. 3-1, Quebec Nordiques. This is Cote coming in. Bumped by Eloranta, carries on. Eloranta holding it on the boards with a skate. Now it's knocked loose up along the glass. For a point goal, a shot, tip right up the net by Hunter. Came on to Hunter. Hunter in front, hanging on to it. Pressure again applied by the Quebec Nordiques. Boy, they set it up beautifully for that goal. But there was also a very bad giveaway by Eloranta, who had possession of the puck and turned it over deep in his own zone. It's 4-1, Quebec. Exactly, Dick. Hunter intercepted the Eloranta giveaway right there. Here you see it. Hunter comes off the boards, intercepts the puck, makes a good play. Back in the middle. 
to Cote, and he buried it between the legs. I think it went off the right pad of Reggie Lovellin and back into the net. Hunter making the back pass right there. We're inside that right arm, and it's a 4-1 Quebec lead. Great forechecking by Quebec, though, to force errors like that inside the line. Eloranta was forced to go around the net until he got rid of it in a hurry. But good forechecking by the Nordiques. They're leading now 4-1. to one. I'll give you the official scoring play. It was Cote, his seventh from Hunter, at 12.43. The Nordiques again. Peter Stastny stopped by Nilsson this time to Reinhardt. Conroy brings it out. Kaplinski out of the line. Couldn't find it near center along with Lavalle. Nilsson couldn't pick it up. That's Peter Stastny again with Marion. He's in on the play with Goulet on the other wing. 6.35 left in the period. Nilsson didn't see the pass. It hit a skate, bounced down the ice. Rochefort back, icing called against Calgary. This game is coming to you from the Coliseum in Quebec City. Six minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the period, and the Quebec Nordiques have shot ahead four to one here in the second period. Tukey at center now with Anton Stasny and Slager on the right side for Quebec. Bridgman with his slip and they can't move it out. On the other wing, Hindmarsh, they get it across the line now. Bridgman going after it. Bridgman going in. Can't get a shot though. He was not flying. And there's going to be a penalty to the Quebec Nordiques. Hislop going in. The Calgary net empty, but now the Nordiques in possession, and the referee, Bruce Hood, hands out this penalty. Well, it's something that the Flames need, I think, Mickey, if they can get something going here. Four straight goals against them. What we're seeing here tonight, Mickey, at times, looks like a contrast in style. A carry the buck over the line routine. The Nordiques and the Flames shooting the puck into the other end. Well, that's the way the Nordiques especially play. They do not like to get the puck away. They try to make those plays, especially the Stastny brothers, at the opposition blue line rather than dumping it in and giving it away. On the other hand, Calgary will get speed up at center ice, and unless they've got a three-on-two or two-on-one, they'll throw it in just over center ice, send a couple of guys in and chase it. So you do have two complete different styles of play here. So far, obviously the Nordique style is paying off. So Blake Wesley off at 13.55, hooking the call. Calgary trailing by three goals now. He needs to get something back here in a hurry. With only six minutes to play in the period, you're right, Dick, they need a goal badly. The Nordiques have been looking sharp when they've had the opportunity to move it in front of Lemelin. They've got four goals so far. Reinhardt is back. He falls. Goulet. And they're for Quebec, and he comes up with it. Goulet now stopped. Now McDonald is on the move. He circles with Nilsson, with Reinhardt, with Schwinar. Schwinar had it bounce over his stick. Schwinar has it again. Tried to pass it in front, it's grabbed and knocked down the ice by Randy Muller. Okay, we talk a lot about the goaltenders who come out and challenge the shooters, but Dan Bouchard plays so deep in his crease. Maybe the fans can watch him here if they get a chance. Maybe you can talk about it before we get a chance. He's been criticized for that. Just that the... Aubrey coming close with that shot. One minute, four seconds left on the penalty. To Blake Wesley of Quebec. But so far, good penalty killing until this break by Nelson going in. Nelson stopped by Bouchard. Great save by Dan Bouchard on the sharpshooter, Kent Nelson. Well, he stayed deep in his crease, Mickey, and it didn't hurt him at all as the Magic Man. A perfect pass from Guy Schwinar. And the breakaway stopped by Bouchard. Well, he's going to say whatever he's doing, it's all right, and it's paying off for him as Nelson, a tricky puck handler. Throws the deep to the backhand, goes back to the forehand. Bouchard shoves that right pad out right there to make the save. And Nielsen, probably one of the toughest one-on-one -on -one men in the National Hockey League. See, Bouchard really didn't move at all for the deke. He stayed right there and waited for Nielsen to commit himself. 46 seconds left in the penalty to Blake Wesley. Eloranta for Calgary at the line, closing in, didn't shoot it. Passes it off, gets it back. Eloranta now with a shot, and it's knocked down, and Pichette cleared it to the line, not out. Calgary on the power play, Lavalle going after it in the corner, around the net, Pichette again. Hunter over there. 
Richie Dunn keeping it in. Ellerat tap the line, nearly lost it. Now winds up, take the shot, gives it to Dunn. Back in front and hopped away from a valley. Slapped at it now. Bouchard out of the net. The Nordiques will clear it again down the ice. With eight seconds left in the penalty. That'll do it. As the Flames get to the line, Dunn to center ice. Paplinski, the penalty is over. Paplinski in across the line into a traffic jam over there. And Paymaw brings it back out. A nice play goes down to Cote. To Aubrey! Oh, what a save by Lemelin. Great save at one end, and now Lemelin at the others. Bridgman is back. Going in, slides a pass in for Lavalley. Bridgman again. That's knocked away by Bouchard. Still Calgary. In back of the net, Bridgman not flying. Aubrey in back of the net to Moeller. Moeller is bumped. Lavalley coming up with a puck. The Valley got it in front, and nobody there but Rochefort, and he brings it out. Teams at full strength, that long shot from the line. Lemelin, easy save, and Poplinski for Calgary. Pass hit Stastny. Paymaw was in front with Anton Stastny as Peter intercepted. Live from the Coliseum in Quebec City, Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Well, Mickey, these two goaltenders have made some great stops. The last few minutes, each has had a fantastic save. Short goals. First Bouchard, and then Lemelin. But it's 4-1 at the moment. Quebec out front. We are just talking about Bouchard staying back in the net on the last Flames power play. You saw Bouchard about 20 feet out. A super play by Danielle to come out and cut the angle down as Big Poplinski was in front trying to screen him. So there's one time that it paid off to come out of that crease area. Conroy and Reinhardt on the Calgary defense. 2.45 left in the period. There's Bouchard coming out. 4-1 Quebec Nordiques. And they slap it to the line, but the Flames keep it in. Weir now gets a chance to clear it and does. Conroy back to Reinhardt. Reinhardt takes a look. Jackson on the right side, and he was covered immediately by Peter Stastny. Reisbrow and Mokozak are the other players up front for Calgary. Peter Stastny with Anton, with Marion. Look out, Peter at the line. How about that for passing, Mick? They don't even have to look around. Reinhardt tipped down the ice. Crowd sure gets excited when they start dumping that puck blindly around. And most of the time, it works for them. Peter, Marion, and Anton. They're on there now. Here they come. This is Anton. Can't get through that jam. Schwinar stopped by Weir. Weir coming up. Paymon now on the line. With Anton coming in. Can't get a shot. Will Paymon in front to Anton. By Hunter. Paymon shot. That's why. Minute and a half left in the period. Schwinar knocked it on the boards down the ice. It's a little too far for Beers. And again, the Nordiques in control in the center ice area. This is Cote coming in, dropping it. A point. Shot! Tipped near the net, but wide. Pema, good move. Dropped it there. Now Schwinar missed a chance to clear. Quick shot! Stopped by Lemelin. Hunter, great pressure now by Quebec. Pass went through the crease. Russell has stepped in the crease area. There's going to be a penalty to Quebec. Beers coming in. And now the Nordiques pick it up. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Coliseum. In well, we'll pay out in the box for the Nordiques. Bob, an unnecessary penalty to take. The Nordiques with all kinds of pressure on Calgary. Coming close to scoring that fifth goal. And here's a look, a look at how it happened. You see Paymont standing behind Bill Russell. Gives him the two-handed cross check. Bruce Hood there to make the call. And the chance for Calgary to try to get back in this hockey game, trailing by three. 45 seconds left in the period. And Mickey, you'd have to say it's a must situation for Calgary. We're close to it to get a goal here before the period is out. They haven't got much time. 30 seconds. That'll be a big momentum booster, too, going into that locker room down two instead of three. Back to the line. Reinhardt. Schwinar waits. Gets the pass. Takes his shot. Rebound was there, but the Nordiques cleared up along the wing to center ice. 16 seconds left. The Nordiques, can you believe this? They're in again. But the pass this time went in behind Aubrey. Eight seconds left. 4-1. Quebec. McDonald with a chance. A long shot. 
Not much of a chance from there. And the siren goes on that Bouchard save, ending the second period. And the two period shot total, 22. 20 for Quebec. So the score at the end of the second period is Quebec 4 and Calgary 1. Here at the Coliseum in Quebec City, the Quebec Nordiques are leading the Calgary Flames by a score of 4-1 to one after two periods. Not exactly the best period to talk to Lanny McDonald of the Flames, but Lanny, the NHL's leading goal scorer, is here. I thought, Lanny, you fellas had so many chances earlier in the hockey game. Suddenly, they just scored those three quick goals on you. Well, we felt if we could get a couple goals early, especially uh, with them kind of uh, being on a bad streak, that, that we could jump all over them tonight. We got the one, but we just see, couldn't seem to get that second goal. He made a lot of big saves, and uh, unfortunately, they started to come back on us. Lanny, Mickey Redmond just pointed out that he thought we were looking at a contrast in styles here tonight. The Nordics with the carrying the puck over the line routine, the Flames shooting it in. Something we heard a lot of, Lanny, in the wake of the Soviet series. Would you agree with Mickey's assessment here tonight? Well, I, I definitely think so, and especially when they have players like uh, Marion Stashney, Anton Stashney, uh, uh, people like Tardif, they can all handle the puck so well. Uh, and we've been dumping it in, trying to uh, get on their defense. Unfortunately, uh, we haven't come up with too many pucks. National Hockey League teams, Lanny, have been criticized by the fans about, about shooting it in too much. I know in Montreal, the Canadians, the fans boo them when they shoot it in too much, so they feel. Uh, do you think that this is the kind of a style that you should get back to, carrying the puck over the blue line? Well, I think from a fan uh, point of view, they definitely want to see you carry it over uh, because you got possession of the puck all the time. But a lot depends on the personnel of your team. Uh, if you have bumpers and grinders, then naturally it's in your favor to, to dump it in. Uh, we're kind of caught in between. We've got a, quite a few bumpers and grinders, but we've also got some finesse players too. So hopefully we can put a, a good combination of them both together. You must have been putting a pretty good combination, Lanny, uh, through back to the Soviet game because you fellows have been playing pretty well. Well, we played... Uh, very well for about three weeks before they came and we had a game plan we stuck to it we tried not to ever get caught on a three on two and let them make those drop passes and that and, and fortunately uh, everyone come up with a big game and it was a big lift for us personally you are having an excellent year your career high is 47 you're one away from the 40 mark now just past the new year i know is the 50 mark still a goal for snipers is that something that's just a little bit special well, I think it'll always be special, although Wayne has definitely rewritten <laughs> the books on 50 goals. But uh, anytime you can score 50 goals in the NHL, I, I think it's a very special mark and one that, uh, you know, I'd like to have. Uh, the other one is naturally the Stanley Cup. You have been doing it with a variety of line mates at times. Uh, the coach, Bob Johnson, has you playing with different combinations. Uh, how's the setup? Well, I think you have to get used to playing with everyone, uh, regardless of who the coach puts out there. Uh, when it comes down to uh, the playoffs, uh, naturally you... You like to stick with the same guy, but uh, you should be uh, able to play with anyone out there, and, and he's done a lot of line juggling, trying to get the right combinations. I'm just happy to play the game. Looking ahead to a 13-day road trip, I don't imagine too many hockey players, how many hockey teams uh, like something like that coming up. Well, fortunately for us, we uh, won the last four games we, before we came on the road trip, so we were going on a, on kind of a high note, and hopefully we can turn it around in the third period. Naturally, it's a long time, but uh, we're looking forward to it. Our time is up. Lanny has one message you'd like to get across. Special hello to Andra, Leah, Barrett, and Ardell, and a very happy birthday to little <laughs> Leah. <laughs> because of the birthday, we sneak it in. Thank you very much, Lanny. Thank you. Lanny McDonald of the Calgary Flames. It's a 4-1 to hockey game here. The Nordics are leading the Flames. Now to NHL control. Here again is Brian McFarlane. Tonight we're going to talk to the coach about minor hockey and minor hockey week. And there in Lanny McDonald, we have a fitting representative of all that's good. Isn't he lovely? Minor. Isn't he a nice? He fellow? looks sick though. No. He does look sick. He's too late. He's going to die by the end of oh, February. I'm don't telling you, he's say too things late. like he that. He's going to score 50 some odd goals. Well, he's got to get some weight on there. He must what are your? Death. Forget about Lanny for a minute. He left a nice impression. Isn't he wander. lovely? Yeah. Minor hockey week. What are your thoughts and impressions? Well, uh, you know what gets me, I'm going to tell you, there's two heroes. I really admire two people in minor hockey. I like everybody, but the number one is the, the, the mothers. You know, I used to have hockey schools. I used to see them at uh, 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 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. They're down there tugging on those uniforms and everything like that. If, you know, everybody sees us up here. We're with hockey and Scotty Bowman and everything. The people that make hockey are the mothers. Now, remember, I give it to the why, hockey-wise, before. Now I'm telling you, the mothers are the backbone behind 
minor hockey for sure. Now, lately, I said this last year too, I've been going around to the rinks and the coaches, the young coaches that get up at five in the morning, six in the morning, all I read about in the papers, how bad they are. You know, like they want to win, they want to win. Everything all costs to win. Sure, there's some guys that, uh, you know, they got to win at all costs and everything and hurt kids and everything. But for every one of those guys, there's a hundred that wants to help kids and everything. And I'm getting sick and tired of hearing how bad minor league coaches are. If the people that are criticizing them that much, get, they get up at four and five in the morning, then they can criticize. Okay, my, my boy played minor hockey. When he was 12, he was on a team. And the coach said to him, Mike, you're the biggest kid. Go out there and rip that other kid's head off. I Did said, he? No, Mike's not. A, he's not that type of guy. No, so, I know. But but he said, I don't think I want to play on that team anymore. So we made a change. But I, I, I didn't know quite what how to handle that. You know, you got a guy putting in a lot of hours helping the kids. Well, that's them. not right. And, uh, but he's the. You're saying he's the exception. Take their heads off in the NHL. It's a little different. There, he is the exception. I'll tell you, uh, my son. I remember we traveled. He was about seven or eight. We traveled a hundred miles uh, to see him play. Never got on the ice. He opened and closed the door. He was quite happy. A good cheerleader and everything. But. For every That didn't one. upset you? No, it didn't upset me. I just throttled him <laughs> after the game. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> but, you know, it, for every one of them, that's what we hear about all the time. And there's articles in the paper how, the, uh, how tough the parents are on the kids. It's, it's, all right to, you know, it's all right to sit back and criticize. Those people that are writing those articles and everything, they're in a nice warm office and we're up here and everything. Get up at 4 and 5 in the morning, go down to those rinks, then they can say it. Did you do that? Did you coach minor hockey? I coached minor hockey, and I won a championship, too. And I, 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 hated, I hate to tell you what I did. No, tell us. All right. I th when the parents hollered at me, I benched his kid, <laughs> and they never hollered again. Now, I got a little tip for the coaches out there, this coach's corner. Uh, a lot of people ask me, if there's one thing in your practice I think you should do. Now, from watching the zillion practice with the Russians, I have to admit they do one good thing is that when they go on the ice, the kids have a puck. Now, you've got to teach them not to be shooting it in the net, not the boards and everything. For the whole hour they're, they're on the ice, they should have a puck and handle the puck. That's one thing we have, we have lost art. We've lost it. We've got to handle that puck. But coaches, get those kids with those puck, handle that puck. That's, that's the word that's for That's the tip okay. from the expert. From the coach himself, Don Cherry, and our second intermission continues in just a moment. And tonight, Hockey Night in Canada is coming to you from the Coliseum in Quebec City. I'm Dick Irvin with Bob Cole and Mickey Redman. A 4-1 to one hockey game. The Quebec Nordics in the lead as the Calgary Flames got off to a one nothing lead. And now the Nordics have come back and have taken control and have made the most of their scoring opportunities. The Flames down by three. They start the period on a power play. 108 left in the penalty to Will Fama. Bob? Okay, Dick. And the third period underway. Calgary. You know they're going to come out hard and tough to try and score a goal here on this power play. Reinhardt is in there. Reinhardt got it along the boards to the line from Nilsson to Schwinar. There's the shot, and it dribbled just wide of the post. Bouchard did not see it. It went behind him, but just missed the far corner. 35 seconds left of the penalty. Schwinar is back. He's being watched carefully. Now he decides to lug it himself. The Nordiques are making changes. Bridgman coming in with McDonald to Bridgman. Schwinar and Nielsen in front of the net. Lapointe in against Bridgman. There's McDonald getting it back to Dunn. A pass in from Schwinar. Comes back to Dunn, shooting right in front. And down the post again. Right off the post. That's three tonight for the Calgary Flames, and McDonald has had tough luck. By Bouchard, beaten, hold on the play, and hit the goal post. <laughs> Here they come again. Brow. he put it right at Bouchard. The Nordiques trying to clear it. Pema on the ice again, got it down the ice, inside the Calgary line. The teams are at full strength. Pema for checking, Cote in front. He was stopped by Lemelin. 4-1 to the score. Quebec leading. Applying pressure again. Now Pichette has to back out of the zone as Reisbrow brings it in. Reisbrow bumped along the boards. The Flames carry on. Mokozak couldn't come up with it. Peter Stastny does. Got away from Russell. Spun around. Falls. Penalty coming up. And here it is. 
Bill Russell draws his second penalty of the night. From the Coliseum in Quebec City, this is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. We're in the NHL tonight among the scores. Detroit leading Toronto 3-2. To Pittsburgh leading Montreal 3-2. to two, And Edmonton ahead of Minnesota 1-0. And the Canadians struggling again. They go into Hartford and Pittsburgh playing two of the teams in the lower echelons. Losing Hartford or losing third period tonight. Marion Stastny's pass got out across the line. And here he is again. Russell in the penalty box. Quebec leading 4-1. Rochefort to center. Played it in on the wing. The Nordiques on the power play now. That's Anton Stastny in the corner. Comes back from Peter to Marion. To Peter. Into the side of the net. Anton centered it. It was tipped in time. And comes back down the ice. Minute and a half left of the Calgary penalty. Anton Stastny to Marion. To Peter. Up to the line, to Anton, offside on the other wing was Goulet. In that game in Pittsburgh, Paul Gardner of the Penguins has scored all three goals for his team. As we look at Anton Stastny, he's been the subject of some trade rumor talk of late. He's been in a bit of a slump. Here's that play, Mickey, where the puck went right off the goal post. Behind well, Calgary, again, just having all kinds of problems getting it in. Look at it off that right post. Bouchard realized it was in behind him, and just as that play was stopped, McDonald got a rebound. And Bouchard made a big stop again to keep Calgary off the board. Bridgman had the first good chance, and of course, McDonald was right in the crease. But they came up empty again. A minute and a five seconds now left of the penalty to Russell. Peter Stastny, Rochefort, back to Goulet. Marion Stastny has it now. It goes into Peter, to Marion, into the side of the net to Peter. <laughs> Just pass it around, Mickey. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You like that? That's as pretty as you're going to see him, Dick. I was just going to make a note. Calgary, or I should say Quebec, has only got nine or ten shots on goal in Buffalo last week, and they're very, very patient in the way they move the puck around. Just a beautiful example of puck handling. Stastny to Stastny across the front of the net. Of course, Calgary one man short. They can't be everywhere. And Rochefort moving in from his defensive position right there to jam that puck up high over top of Reggie Lemelin. Boy, that's the prettiest goal you're going to see, Dick. Okay, that's the kind of hockey they played last spring when the Boston Quebec series drew tremendous audiences all across Canada on the television version of the games because it is just tremendous to watch when they are in form and they're in form here tonight. So Rochefort with his fourth of the year from Peter and Mary and Stastny at 3.08. 5 to 1 is the score. Quebec now out front by four goals. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Coliseum in Quebec City. Now Quebec with Aubrey at center, Cote and Pema on the wings. Nilsson, Poplinski, Lavalley for Calgary. In the center ice zone. Bringing it in, Obrey with Paymaw shooting. The rebound comes right back. Paymaw had his stick lifted. And it's cleared out into the center ice area. Poplinski comes back with it. Alaranta back there with Russell on the Calgary defense. Five to one is the score. Quebec leading with 16 minutes and 10 seconds left in the game. To center ice, Nilsson coming in. Poplinski with a pass. That's stopped by Obrey. Coming out with Cote and Pema. Couldn't handle the pass on his skate. Russell tipped it ahead. Moeller with Rochefort on the Quebec Nordiques defense. Back Rochefort tipped it ahead. Now they move it. To center ice comes Goulet and across the line of Peter Stasty. A quick shot. That's wide of the goal. Kept in. By Wolf Paymaw at the line. Paymaw slides the pass to Rochefort. Rebound is there. And the Flames hustle it out to center ice. 15 and a half minutes left in the game. Schwedar lost his stick. Now Calgary. Doug Reisbrow. Pass through center. Schwedar coming in. Russell couldn't hang on. 
There's a sting to stay on side. It's called. 5-1 score here. The Nordics leading the play. Four minutes and 46 seconds gone. This afternoon, the sixth shutout of the season for Pete Peters in Boston. A 4-4 Chicago and Philadelphia tie. Hartford hanging on to a 1-0 lead. They scored early in that game against the New Jersey Devils. A 2-2 tie. Washington and Buffalo. Maruka's one of the goals. Pittsburgh, a three goal by Paul Gardner, leading Montreal 3-2. And John Tonelli has three goals for the Islanders. They're up on Los Angeles 4-2. Reed Larson's goal has put Detroit ahead of Toronto 3-2. 15 minutes left in this hockey game. And the Nordiques, having come off a road trip, a disastrous road trip, they lost five straight games on the road. And the way they're playing tonight, Mickey, you wonder how they went into a slump like that, coming up empty. They were outscored. I think they scored something like five goals. Well, Bob, you know, they had a lot of defensemen hurt, as I think Dick alluded to earlier in the, in the broadcast. Uh, Rochefort, Pichette was out. DuPont is still out. There was a lot of talk, uh, and Dick, you mentioned about trade talk with the Stastny's. They're looking for some defensemen, and they've got to give up something to get something. But I think they were hurting defensively, but obviously they were hurting offensively, too. Only scoring five goals in those five games on the road. But the Stastny's are back in gear here tonight, and they've got to be going for this Quebec club to be successful. Calgary's Doug Risebrow played into the corner. There goes Risebrow again. Got a pass in front and hit a skate. Schwinar was left. A point all over him, though. And it's into the center ice zone again. Anton Stastny with Cote. Moeller now trying to stop McDonald. Bumped him. McDonald stays with it with Conroy. Schwinar couldn't knock it down, and Reinhardt has to come back. Reinhardt. Conroy. He played it ahead. McDonald had it poked away by Hunter to center ice. Flames having all kinds of trouble getting it over that line. Now they shoot it in. Nordique's trying to get a whistle, but it comes loose to Conroy. His shot right on. Bouchard stopped it, and it'll be cleared by Cote. Out with Anton Stastny and Hunter. That's Anton getting set, played it into the side of the net. Cote has stopped him there. Doug Reisbrow is back to help Reinhardt, and Reinhardt takes it behind the net. Finds he has to turn and go the other way to get away from Stastny. The center, Schwinar, couldn't find it. Tardif failed to shoot it in. It hit the linesman over there, and Schwinar comes right back with Hislop in on the play. Hislop went after it. Bumped by a point, and the Nordiques shoot it out again. Nice play to center ice. Here comes Tukey. Played it in behind Tardif. He didn't see it. Russell back out for Calgary to center. And over the line is Hindmarsh. He is stopped. Can't find it. Hislop to the side of the net to Bridgman. And he was put off stride by Bouchard, who came out. Hindmarsh missed it. Pema coming out. Three Quebec Nordiques. Weir on the far wing. There's Weir picking it up, shooting it. And it's stopped by Lemelin. 13 minutes left in the game. Five to one the score. The Quebec Nordiques. There's Wesley's pass. Pema going in with Aubry. Getting set in front of the net. Tukey was stopped. Got it again. Played it in front of Pema. High shot over the glass. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Coliseum in Quebec City. And you see the time remaining, 12.43. Time running out of the Calgary Flames. They started on the right foot tonight when Highmarsh got his ninth of the year at 10.32. And we're in what looked to be pretty good control of the game. But the Nordiques took advantage of every chance they got to score and got two before the period was out. They led two to one. They're up five to one now. Now into the center eye zone. That's Pichette. Played it ahead to Rochefort. He was bumped by Poplinski, but dribbled across the line, though. Marion Stastny to Goulet went behind him. They have to rush to get back on the side. Bichette played it ahead. Goulet dropped it back. Goulet again from Rochefort. Up the center, and Ribble takes over. Long pass slides down the ice. In behind the Quebec goal, Bichette against Poplinski. Nilsson went after it, with Lavallee getting it back to Ribble. He hooked it off the board for Poplinski, and he has stopped him there. Dropped into him again by Lavallee. Nielsen missed it, and Rochefort starts out. 
With 11.45 left in the game, to center ice, Peter Stastny coming in with Goulet. There goes Goulet breaking for the net, can't shoot it. The Valley knocked him down, and it's dropped in front of the goal for Ribble. Ribble got rid of it to center, and Moeller for Quebec. Poked it ahead. Marion Stastny with Goulet, and Peter Stastny, now Goulet going off, it's the Nordiques change. And Cote steps on with Peter Stastny, a low shot. Nowhere near the net, it's down the ice again. And Moeller back there. Schwenar missed it. Reisbrow left it for him. Schwenar shot, hit a skate in front of Bouchard. Cote against Ribble. Reisbrow in there against Hunter, they bumped together. Schwenar went after it. And Marion Stastny starts out with Moeller coming to center. Cote on the left wing. Hit over the line and stopping is Marion Stastny. Taking a good look. Gives it to Rochefort. Now it comes back in front. Moeller in from the line. Flipped it into the corner. Conroy just poked it ahead as they near the halfway mark of the third. it with Lavalle getting it back to Ribble. He hooked it off the boards for Poplinski and he has stopped in there. Dropped into him again by LaValle. Nielsen missed it. And Rochefort starts out. With 11.45 left in the game to center ice, Peter Stastny coming in with Goulet. There goes Goulet breaking for the net. Can't shoot it. LaValle knocked him down. And it's dropped in front of the goal for Ribble. Ribble got rid of it to center and Moeller for Quebec. Poked it ahead. Marion Stastny with Goulet and Peter Stastny now Goulet going off as the Nordiques change. And Cote steps on with Peter Stastny, a low shot. Nowhere near the net, it's down the ice again. And Moeller back there. Schwenar missed it. Reisbrow left it for him. Schwenar's shot, hit a skate in front of Bouchard. Cote against Ribble. Reisbrow in there against Hunter, they bump together. Schwenar went after it. And Marion Stastny starts out with Moeller coming to center. Cote on the left wing. Hit over the line and stopping is Marion Stastny. Taking a good look. Gives it to Rochefort. Now it comes back in front. Moeller in from the line. Flipped it into the corner. Conroy just poked it ahead as they near the halfway mark of the third period. And the Nordiques in control now just hanging on to that four goal lead. That's Ribble. Poked it to center. Cote dropped it back. The Nordiques. Moeller at his own line. Good puck control now by the Quebec Nordiques at this point in the game. And Ribble hooked a high one down the ice. The Flames trying to make changes. Coming back is Wesley. That's Wesley starting out. A well, point is with him on the defense. Wesley himself this time to center. Shoots it in, and Reinhardt again for Calgary. They go from end to end, but you get the feeling, Mickey, not full out. Well, Calgary just cannot continue to go like this. They want to get back and try to do something in this game. Trailing by four, only 9.50 to go in the game. They've got to open up wide up on the, on the offense and try to get back in the hockey game. And a tough chore it is. They're down four goals with 9.35 left in the game. There's Pichette again. Hooked in over the line by Heinmarsh. He did not have control of the puck and therefore offside. With the score, Quebec 5, Calgary 1. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Bob Cole with Dick Irvin and Mickey Redmond at the Coliseum in Quebec. And the Nordiques losing five straight on the road in control of this one. They're in again this time. It's knocked away by Lemelin. And Peter Stastny setting it up again in front of the Calgary goaltender. Eloranta now shoots it into the side of the net. Poplinski was covered. Three Nordiques come out of the zone. A pass into Marion Stastny. Peter is in front of the goal. Marion to Peter. He was tied up and can't shoot it. Rochefort took a shot. Peter Stastny was in front of the goal, and I have no doubt it was he who put it home. Well, the Flames have just quit skating. They had to rush up the ice. They lost the puck so easily, Mickey. And back it went, and it's in the net again for a 6-1 to one lead. So it's all Nordics. Well, it's exactly what happened, Dick. They just stopped skating around their own zone and allowed the Nordics to free float around there. And they finally picked up a loose puck. Peter Stastny on the rebound, jamming it underneath. Lemelin, he's got to be wondering, what are, what are my guys doing in front of me? We're just going to look like we're putting out the effort. 
But uh, for all purposes, uh, this one's over. 6-1 Quebec. And the Flames are being soundly beaten here. 11.03, the official time of that goal. Bouchard with a save. Rochefort got an assist on the goal by Peter Stastny for Peter Stastny is 28th on the season. La Point dumped it out. Here comes Anton Stastny. He's moving in quickly. In on the side. Decides to cut in front. Good play for Bowler. Here's his shot. Rebound is there. And the Flames are on it quickly this time, but can't move it out. It's kept in by Tukey. In back of the net on to Anton Stastny, but Reisbrow will pick it up for Calgary. Doug Reisbrow, a good play to the line. And the Flames get as far as center. Schwinar over there with Doug Reisbrow coming in. Reisbrow's backhand shot. Not a hard one, and Bouchard no problem. Back of the net. McDonald trying to knock it in front. Covering up is Tukey. And he has it for the Quebec Nordique, starting back, hitting the line to center. 7.50 left in the game, and the Nordiques make changes now. As do the Calgary Flames, 6-1 is the score. And Quebec in full control of this game, and Aranta played it into the corner. The Flames get as far as center ice. Bridgman at the line, carries on, away from Wesley, who chases him now. Weir couldn't stop it. And Richman shoots it back to Eloranta. Here's his shot. Scores! Shot from the blue line by Eloranta, deflected in front of the net. And it's number two on the night for Calgary. I don't Bouchard think that got was a touch dick by anybody in front. It looked like it hit Bouchard and, and continued on into the net. But the, one of the few times Calgary down in the Quebec zone, and they've got their second goal. It comes from the point. Eloranta just letting it go. I think it hit the inside of the left pad, yes, and then deflected back in through Bouchard's leg, six to two, Quebec leading. Looking at the board here in the Coliseum, the Canadians have gone ahead of Pittsburgh now, seven to four, so they woke up down at the Igloo in Pittsburgh. Of course, Dick, you mentioned that score in Detroit, uh, Detroit ahead of Toronto, three to two, that's a big, big game in that Norris division, fighting for that last playoff spot. There's a shot of the goal coming up from the goal note there, you see the partial save by Bouchard. And up Bouchard. on the shot by Eloranta. Bouchard in his crease. Right in. <laughs> so many times the replay shows right. the goalie's out. Two feet, three feet outside the crease. You never see him in that position. Very seldom. Eloranta the goal, his fourth of the year for Bridgman and Hislop. 12-37. Six to two. Quebec. And the Flames. Not dead yet play it in across the line it ricochets all the way off the board to the corner goes down the ice and Eloranta is back there 650 left Quebec with a four goal lead into center ice play it across the line Heinmarsh and they're offside this game is coming to you from the Coliseum in Quebec City this morning to watch these two teams practice Mickey I thought the Nordics were very quiet very down Calgary full of zip and lots of motion to the practice. Of course, that's five wins straight and five losses straight. No yeah. differently here tonight. Maybe too much zip. Okay. Didn't have any left for tonight. Mind you, Calgary played a good first period, and I thought should have been up by a couple of goals. But Quebec is dominated here in the second and third periods. That's Peter Stastny to Marion. Marion Stastny going in. Peter waits for the move. Doesn't come to him. It goes to the side of the net. There's Peter in front. He didn't get the pass. Popinski knocked it out across the line to center. The Calgary Flames, Lavallee tipped it in with a skate for Conroy. He bumped with Pichette. And Peter Stastny is away again, lugging it across center. Stastny going in, making moves on Schwinar. The Flames break it up and send it back down. Moeller shoots it ahead. Dropped into Marion Stastny, laid it in close. Rebound to Marion Stastny, poked at it. Lavalin, though, had the handle of this one. He held it. Well, Paul Rattles in defense. Stastny's been two or three rebounds in. Here comes the Quebecers' song here at the Coliseum. No, 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 goodbye. I figure it's all over for the Flames. Six to two, Quebec. Here's set replay on the rebounds. Marion Stastny picking up a couple of shots, and Reggie Lavalin holding his ground. 
Stastny's putting on quite a show here tonight, and when they play this way, they are just remarkable. It's so entertaining to watch. Hunters on there now at center with Anton Stastny, who got the pass right off the draw. Bowler shot! <laughs> Deflected off Eloranta, nearly caught the corner, but Lemelin was fairly quick. It would have been nice to see that one go in, Dick, and, and see Randy Moeller get a goal other than against the Canadians. <laughs> right. He's got two this, two this year. <laughs> two big goals against Canadians this year. It's like Stanley Cup play, I guess, every time those two to get together, the interprovincial rivalry. John Garrett, the backup goalie for Quebec here tonight, said there's no way that our Deeks could play the Canadians 80 times a year. He says mentally they couldn't take it. <laughs> yeah. McDonald charging out to center. Lanny McDonald having difficulty. He fell. Puck went by Loranta down the ice, and Russell goes back. This will be icing. Live from the Coliseum in Quebec City, Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. This is Dougie Rice Brown. Interesting day for Doug on Monday. He appears at a hearing in the NHL headquarters in the morning for that hassle he had with Harold Snaps off the ice in Vancouver the other night. Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock, he gets buried. I like this line to me before the game tonight, Dick. Uh, Monday, I've got maybe good news and bad news. <laughs> and then your line was even better. And he's keeping it quiet, isn't he, where he's getting married also? I don't know. The boys are trying to find out, I guess. He's been quite an addition here to the Calgary Flames. They have just uh, been so pleased with the way he has played. He has 14 goals, got off to a good goal-scoring start, and 15 all of last season. Don Edwards is backing up as the goaltender here tonight for the Flames. And before the game, I was privilege introduced on to Jerry McNeil, a one-time fine goaltender for the Canadians. Jerry here because his company's involved in a promotion here tonight, and they were convincing each other that there's room for the little guy in goaltending. They're both <laughs> about the same height, but Jerry was a good one. This is playoff time. 5.05. Left in the game. The Nordiques down. Bumped off the puck. Sliger. Conroy played it on the boards to center ice. Bridgman's pass goes in. Bridgman went after Weir, but it's tossed back out to Slager. Down to Paymon. Paymon in across the line. He lost it. And the Flames with 440 to play. Hislop goes in. Hislop gets set. Can't shoot it from that angle. He's covered anyway. Heinmarsh gets it back to the net. Bridgman to the side of the goal. Heinmarsh standing in the crease. Players fall everywhere. Conroy took a shot. That's blocked by Wesley, who fell in front of it. Dumped down the ice near center. Slager there, number 12 for Quebec. Backs up with it. 4.14 left. In front of the net, Wesley. It's tipped up high on the glass. And Tim Tukey starts back. Goes to the line to center. Brings it in with that long shot wide of the goal. Slager went in after it, and Russell, with the Nordiques changing, gets a pass to Lavallee to center. Lavallee coming in. Winds up. Oh. Hard shot off the post. And it went into the crowd. With the score, Quebec 6 and Calgary 2. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Play just underway, and the puck in back of the Quebec goal. Coming out, Michel Goulet to center. Marion Stastny with him, along with Peter on the other side. That's the Quebec line, and that's Peter. Off the boards, tried to tuck it back to the point. It didn't work. Lavalley coming in for Calgary with Poplinski. Turn, stop, lost to Marion Stastny. One man back, Peter with him. Marion going in, tried to set up Peter, but he was stopped. And the Flames, Nilsson gets it ahead. Nilsson carries out. Coming down with Poplinski, hitting the line. Nilsson trying to go in. Here's Lavalley up on the play. His shot is stopped by Bouchard. Three minutes left in the game. They'll get a whistle now as Rochefort falls on the puck. The Flames coming into this game, Mickey, are on a four-game winning streak. Their longest of the season. That looks like it's over now. Look at this shot off the post. Boy, the the Valley with a real ripping drive. I don't know if Bouchard saw it or just waved at it, but it went off the junction of the goalpost and the crossbar to the Bouchard's left. Well, he can really fire the puck for a little guy, but we'll have a little more. We were talking about Rick LaPointe earlier and young draft choices and the expectations out of them. You know, to say that LaPointe has not developed into a superstar as management might have expected is certainly not a knock on him because he is a very good, solid defenseman in the National Hockey League, and I think at times the management 
teams expect too much of these young people. Rick was drafted as a 20 year old and uh, you know in the old days you players had a chance to grow and nurture under the tutelage of veteran players and coaches and management where they don't get that chance today. And I think in a lot of cases they're expecting too much of these young people and of course they're being drafted at even younger ages today 17 and 18. There's Anton Stastny with Moeller and Cote. Pass behind Cote. Reinhardt bumped him. Anton Stastny went in. Schwinar is on there with McDonald and now Reisbrow on that line for Calgary. It's six to two Quebec. Schwinar drops it back. Hunter for the Quebec Nordiques with Cote and Anton Stastny. They poke it in behind the net and Conroy is back. 2.20 left to play. Bryce Brown coming out with McDonald. McDonald coming in. Fake the shot. Now lets it go. From a difficult angle, he has it again. McDonald knocked it in front. Schwinar! And again, he was robbed in front of Dan Bouchard. Schwinar has had several good scoring opportunities tonight. Just unable to put it in. McDonald back of the net. Bryce Brown in the other corner. Russell up the line. Bryce Brown bumped by Muller. 150 left in the game. They hold it on the boards. Play continues, and Anton Stastny to Cote. One man back at Celeranta. And he fired in a high shot, and the Nordiques are changing again with 140 left. Poke to center. Aubrey dropped it back. Weir to Wesley. To Weir again. One behind McCray. The Flames just flip it in over the line. And a minute 20 left to play in the hockey game. The Calgary Flames starting a five game road trip going down to defeat tonight here against the Quebec Nordiques who have just found out what it's like on the road for five games. They lost five in a row and 105 left now. But it's been Quebec tonight in full flight. They fell behind early with one minute now left in the game when Heinmarsh opened the scoring. Way back at 10.32 of the first period. And Mickey, at that time, you pointed out earlier that the Flames looked like they were coming to mean business tonight. But then, Anton Stastny with a 17th and Goulet with his 28th in that first period. And it seemed with a 2-1 lead going into the second, the Nordiques just kept rolling and Peter has played a great game tonight. Well, again, you point out the patience of the Nordiques and making their passes, waiting for that excellent scoring chance. We haven't seen really any long goals. The only long goal or from a distance standpoint was Goulet's from the 40, 45 foot area in the slot. But most of them have been little short, crisp passes in the crease area and bingo, they get themselves a goal. And that's the way the Nordics function well at their best when they're moving that puck around. But Calgary, I think, was in it for the first period. But for the last two, it's been all Nordics. Marion Stastny up after Goulet coming in on the play. The pass! Stasty with a great burst of speed. Goulet following him. And it's 7 to 2 here at 19 17. Well, Goulet with his second goal of the night, his 29th of the season, takes that pass from Marion Stasty in the slot. He was being taken out of the play, but not well enough, evidently. As you see Conroy go in there, Jim Paplinski coming back. He takes a swipe at it. And Goulet gets a stick on it, level of getting a piece of it, but not enough, and it's 7 2 Quebec. You know, Mickey, this line of Marion Stastny, Peter Stastny, and Goulet have accounted for 85 of the 188 goals Quebec has scored this season. Not bad. Not bad at all. What a production. Now, going back to those stats that we spoke about in the first period, the Stastny's only had 18 points in the last nine games as a threesome. You can see how valuable they can be and, and must be for the Nordiques to win hockey games. Well, that's Goulet with his 29th and great hustle by Marion Stastny and Goulet to catch up on the play. We don't, I don't know exactly how many they've got tonight. There's too many to count, but I bet they've got seven or eight points between the three of them tonight. 27 seconds now left in the hockey game. There goes Anton Stastny coming in. Anton Stastny can't set it up. Conroy. Stopped him. Cote has it. 15 seconds left. Hunter cut the shot. And that's blocked by Lemelin. 7 2 at this point. Five seconds left. Right in front again. Lemelin down. Hanging on to it with one second left on the clock, Mickey. And the formality now of dropping it in in that big circle deep 
in the Calgary zone. Well, we're counting right. Added them up nine points for the Stastny brothers tonight. That's not too bad. Not bad. That's half the output yep. of the last five games. And again, we're talking a lot of trade talk when the Nordics come off that road trip. And Stastny's in, or some of the Stastny's involved with that conversation. There's the drop of the puck, and there is the siren. And that ends this game with the Quebec Nordiques spotting Heimarsh and the Calgary Flames a goal midway along in the first period. But then Anton Stastny and Goulet in the first make it two to one. Marion Stastny and Cote made it four to one. Then Rochefort, Peter, Eloranta got a goal for Calgary and Goulet with. Uh, just 43 seconds left in the hockey game is 29th of the season for a 7 to 2 final score and in just a moment our three star selection the three stars in tonight's hockey game in the Molson Cup competition the first star from the Quebec Nordics Peter Stastny the second star his brother on the right wing Marion Stastny and the third star on defense for the Nordiques who played a fine all-around game tonight Norma Rochefort and those three were among the leaders as the Nordiques came home after what was termed their disastrous road trip and defeated the visiting Calgary Flames by a score of 7-2. to two. And after a good start for the Flames, it was the Nordiques all the way, as that final score would indicate. So the Stasnys put on quite a show tonight. It's very interesting and very entertaining to watch them play the way they played tonight. Full value of the Nordiques, a 7-2 victory. Hockey Night in Canada.